Well, I'm delighted to say we've got Mickey Quinn with us. We're going to talk to him about the um, Division 3 final. It's Loud versus Limerick. Um, the Limerick story is fairly remarkable, but the Loud one, I think, is the one that has attracted most of the attention. Mickey, good morning to you. How are you? Morning, Ger. Um Before we talk about the final, the, the Longford season was a complete roller coaster. Um, you had great wins, hard fought wins some crushing defeats and then uh, Lazarus-like recovery almost as if you could just blink off the defeats what what kind of a season was it so far in the league for you guys how, how did it go how are you feeling about it yeah look at it was probably hit and miss very inconsistent with probably ups and downs um, but again probably we were late starting back with management probably set up uh, later on in the year and then losing numbers not committing and it was probably trying to get a uh, firefight for as long as we could and we probably put in a few massive performances winning games against Westmead and Leash away from home were the two games that we probably looked at and said no nah, we're not going to win them but they were the two that probably got us over the line and then uh, we we kind of allowed salvage the draw against us with a, a last minute uh, free that uh, got them a point. Um, so yeah, it's it's it just shows you how close the divisions are. Um, Limerick gave us a good clip in first round of the league, and then we played loud and drew with them. But it's just amazing how quickly it can turn those two teams pushing on for promotion, and we're fighting for relegation then, and just with the skin of our teeth stayed up. Um, I, I heard you interviewed after one of the games where you kind of talked about your own role and there's like a, a semi-coaching role on the field of play as the game is happening and, and you said this kind of suits you at this stage of your career. Uh, how formalised is that? Is that something that you're you're actu- actually actively talking to the management team about? Is it just naturally the role that you play when you have your experience? I suppose uh, probably a bit of both. You kind of probably play in that position at six, you're kind of in and around it for your own kickouts, opposition kickouts, um, and you've players around you that you can kind of talk to and, and hopefully give instructions um, and, and, and help them out as best you can. And I suppose it, it's kind of suited me with that game that I suppose if you open your mouth that bit more, you can save the legs a little bit. So um, that's, that's definitely helped me a bit, uh, getting a few lads to do a bit more work around me rather than me. Um, but no, I enjoy it. I suppose that's probably the background with the teaching too, that you're kind of coaching slash teaching and you're, you're open to that. Um, and it, it kind of works at, at the moment, especially when we have such a young squad that there's lads that are eager to improve and learn. And if, if they're open to, to listening to a bit of feedback or a few instructions that might help me and help them as well. Uh, I remember talking about um, Dennis Carton years ago talking about how difficult it was to get people to commit um, because the intercounty grind is difficult particularly when there isn't a whole heap to look forward to you, you talked about getting lads to commit at the start of this season was there a particular reason why it was difficult this year or uh, what, what was that like actually compared to previous seasons probably just the unknown there um, of, of what was going to happen and what the, the new setup was um, for, for such a long time uh, and it was an easier option for guys to probably opt out than opt in um, and the other thing is probably with the last two years that we're after having um, it's people have probably realised look at there's more to there's more to life than and just training three, four, five times a week and they start to realise okay hang on a minute I can take a step back here and I might come back in a year or two time and stuff like that and that's been probably happening a good bit in Lanford guys opting on and off for a year or two here and there um, and you can't blame guys either because uh, I think the, the thing with Division 3 and 4 is that that carrot there of what the re- reward is for players it, it probably isn't there as much as the Division 1s and 2s and there has to be a huge element of enjoyment in what you're doing in order for guys to commit and, and stay involved in setups like that. So I think that's a big thing that uh, is across the board that that enjoyment has to be there. And look at if you're not winning and the divisions are, are difficult and you're coming up against uh, teams that might be giving you a clipping, but you'd hope with the Talchin Cup coming on board and Division 3, an opportunity there playing teams on the same level as you that you can probably entice guys to stay around that little bit more Are you excited for that actually the Talton Cup? Excited and wary um, of what way it's going to pan out like you kind of look at it now and you see the teams listed out after the weekend who's going to be in it and you think geez, that could be a ding dong uh, battle like I don't know what, what your odds on and who's going to win it and um, 
because you're looking at some of the teams there from down to Cavan um, if they end up not pro- progressing on in the provincial championships that there's a huge opportunity for up on seven, eight teams that could actually contest it and, and, and win it. Um, but it all depends on what happens from the gap from league to the provincial championships and then the next gap from provincial knockout to when the Talchin Cup is played. And a lot can happen with guys maybe opting off or maybe morale been low after a defeat in the provinces. So, yeah, it's it's. I think that's adds another layer to it that um, there's so many teams that could put their shoulders to wheel and, and really win that and hopefully it gets a promotion that it, it deserves what, What's the most important thing when it comes to that promotion for, from your perspective? Is it simply games and television? Is it, is it good good fixtures and good stadiums? What, what's the key to promotion in, in, in your view? Yeah, I suppose it's probably a mixture of everything um, it's, it's the lead up to it like I think probably two weeks out from a competition like that there should be a big selling point of probably the players and the promotion of it and then kind of getting a brief run through of, of, of the different counties and where where they're at and, and see that it is important to to those counties and then again that um it's promoted to fans that you know you're looking at the division threes and fours this weekend and you're looking at probably the key players for for Limerick and Loud and thinking right there's not too many um people that have heard or know a whole pile about these guys like Samuel Roy has probably hit the headlines um this this year a lot more than others with, with his score and exploits but there's an awful lot more players in Loud and Limerick that have have brought them to that level and seeing seeing more game footage uh, of these players uh, will give people an appreciation well Jesus there is good players out there and it's not just your one or two big names per county like there's more than that um, and you know if, if you were to name off one player from each county I think everyone's probably able to do that but when it comes down to seeing more game time and footage uh, you get an understanding and appreciation that there's a lot more out there than just the guys that kick the scores In terms of this game this weekend um, how important is it for Loud and Limerick because they both they're both on different journeys but it's fairly similar in terms of the, the turnaround that they've experienced um, in recent seasons and you can kind of see how a season it's not going to be derailed because it's been a brilliant season. Whatever happens from this point forward, promotion to Division 2 for both those teams next year is going to be a huge thing for them to be able to hang their hat on. But a little bit of silverware along the way is a massive shot in the arm. So you can see how, for some counties, these games have, have in the past not actually mattered that much in the grand scheme of things. But for these two, it feels a little bit different. Yeah, I think that's something that probably creeps up a little bit in some of the divisions that um, or those finals that it's an opportunity there for silverware for division three and four and and once you get to croke park um you have an opportunity to win something in croke park whereas we'd probably be on the other end of of that that when you get to croke park it's not really much of a reward um playing in leinster semi-finals against the likes of dublin and um, but i think they're really uh, how how both teams probably got back to training probably last night and, and reassessed of where they're at um, and probably strapped up after uh, probably a tough league campaign and injuries are fairly good but both teams would be really pushing um, to try and get a bit of silverware and that kicks them on for for the Talchon Cup or the Provincial Championship that they can actually okay our season isn't finished here you're getting an extra game by playing a league final um, and then you're off into your Provincial Championship see how that goes and then Talchon Cup and I think that was probably the most enjoyable part for for any year that I would have played in it's playing the most games um, and there's years there where you might play two championship games and some years that if things go well you might get five and and getting more games in whether it be a league final Talchon Cup um, championship or or the league that the more games you play the more you're going to come together as a team and learn and improve Yeah I mean it seems like basic arithmetic games are great we like games we should have more games I mean I realise it's taken us uh, 35 years to get to the point where we're going to have a bit of a dog's dinner but at least there'll be some more games so maybe we take the little victories along the way Tell us about Sam Mulroy and um, how good is he? Yes, look at um, it. It probably Mickey Hart's setup that he has there with whether it be with Tyrone or with Loud. He's he's built his team around the way Sam is playing and and what he offers to the team. 
do you know there's there's nothing new or groundbreaking with with what Mickey's doing. It's it's probably the same same uh, canvas that he's working off. He's set up really well defensively, and then when you can try and counter attack from there and create the scoring opportunities, that Sam has been the one to to chip in and get those scores. But you know, uh, Kieran Byrne, Bevan Duffy, Connor Grimes. There's a few other guys. Tommy Dernan there uh, at midfield that has been probably long servants furloughed um, and they've offered something something else there in that probably setting up defensively and, and giving opportunities to Mulroy and other guys in the forward line like Grimes and that to, to get scoring chances. I was going through it there. I think he's 42% of Loud's overall scores um, but of that 75% of his scores I think what is it 45 points from threes and 45s um, so like there's there's definitely a game plan there to pr- play a strong running game and if they're running at you hard and they can draw fouls they'll draw fouls and they're quite happy to take their free slow the game down and play it on their terms and, and the way Mulroy is kicking um, just outside the 45 with his scoring range from freeze and you've probably seen highlights in that that some of the freeze he scored and uh, the one against us to level it at the last kick of the game it was like that it was on the edge of the 45 and strong wind against him and still managed to kick it so that's a massive that's a massive uh, addition to, to Loud and the way they've set up Limerick on the other hand similar enough um, but their their game they're a strong running team and I think Croke Park is really going to suit Limerick this uh, this weekend the, the wing backs there uh, wing fours, uh, Childs, um, Peter Nash, Jason Ryan, uh, Hugh Burke and Robbie Burke are causing a lot of trouble uh, in the full forward line. Um, and it's it's going to be, I think, an open game. But I think one thing that we see from both teams is that with that running game and if there's space there, that there's going to be goal chances. And I think Limerick and Loud have definitely created lots of goal chances uh, throughout the league campaign. It, it felt to the end of... Uh, Tyrone tenure that uh, Mickey Hart was uh, not being criticised for, for their failings but kind of a sense that he was maybe holding them back a little bit and they needed a new change of direction and they got their All-Ireland win whereas now Mickey Hart is uh, getting a lot of credit for what Lau they're doing and getting back into the Division 2 football so so where's that graph at at the moment in your view with regards to the, to the stocks of, of Mickey Hart? Yeah look it's, it's he, he has a template for a game plan and that has proven and shown that it's worked um, and if if you stick to it that it can really cause trouble from Division 1 right down to Division 4 and, and work in, in those divisions but I suppose I think Tyrone were maybe on a different trajectory that did such quality forwards um, that everyone wanted to see those those guys play and, and, and offering a little bit more and maybe it didn't suit some of those players um, to to play that maybe defensive style of, of football but again you, you can't take away from what he's done with Tyrone what he's done with uh, with Loud at the moment it shows you that there's a template there that works and if if players buy into it um, you can really push on and, and make huge gains and improvements at the end of the day winning games that's what's going to get people and players interested in playing um, so he's done that and it's going to be a difficult division for them next year but they're they're on the upward curve and it's not easier to to be up in division two than where they're coming from from division four you you obviously are are looking at longer term trends and stats and analysis when you're in games are you seeing a difference in the style of play from the teams you're playing against and even what you're all you're you're trying to do yourselves like where is the game trending at the moment yeah, it's it's funny. It's it's kind of gone both ways. Um, you you go back, and I think I think one of the things that you notice from watching your division ones and twos and down to division threes and fours that, um, probably three and four are trying to do um the same kind of things in pressing, kickouts, setting up zonal presses, maybe false presses where you might let the ball go short uh, and then put a squeeze on, and um, but when you've different keepers and different uh, the likes of Niall Morgan Rory Began that if you put on a press and it's played long over the top he's taken maybe 10-12 players out and it creates an, a scoring opportunity straight away 
Whereas I think that that style of playing short kickouts or really short range kickouts to your full back line or even half back line, you have to work it past 12, 14 players to get up the field. Whereas I think it's gone to the stage now where teams are looking mid range and, and long range kickouts that you're creating an attack straight away. If you can get that ball down on the tee and out long, um, it, it sets a platform that you can take out maybe six, seven, eight players uh, out, opposition players out with a kick out and start attack straight away whereas I think previously possession was was nine tenths the law I think it's got to the stage now where it's getting that ball into the forward line more um, and probably quicker is going to create scoring chances but probably create major scoring chances rather than uh, settling for clipping over a point that if you can get it down to the other end of the pitch as quickly as possible there's opportunities for goals My last question on that is is that anything to do with the mark or was that happening anyway? Uh, I don't think so. Maybe it, it probably is helping it a little bit. Um, but if you look at some of the the scores that are goal chances, maybe um, Tyrone's at the weekend kick long wasn't a can Canavan, and then another kick inside to McCurry and McCurry goal. Whether that was a mark or not, um, or whether he stopped for the mark, it probably did help in that situation. But um, I think it might have promoted and kind of maybe fast-tracked um, management and, and players thinking in probably not being afraid to take that opportunity to go long. Um, whereas in the past, maybe it was like, oh, don't go long, safer to have possession. So, yeah, it might have fast-tracked things to to think that way. And I think I heard Zach Tui talking a little bit about it um, at the moment that with, with Geelong there, that their their mantra at the moment is kick the contest and they're they're confident enough to win those one-on-one contests because they've done a lot of work and training uh, and I think that's the level that it's at and listen to McCurry talking as well similar about those 50-50 balls that if you can win them and back your forwards and your midfielders that if a keeper can kick it out or a midfielder can kick it into the forward line and they're going to compete and, and, and contest it and, and win it and um, that's the more times it goes in there, the more chance you have a score. And it's it's fairly uh, fairly basic or rough and ready thinking, but the more opportunities you create, the more chances you have a score. And, and I think in the past, it was possession in your own half and middle third. And that possession counts for nothing if you can't actually penetrate the, that position. Yeah, look, always really interesting to have you on, Mickey. Thanks a million for joining us this morning. Cheers. Thanks a million, man. It's Mickey Quinn giving us his thoughts there uh, about the Division Three League final. I think that 